there is no one lens that is the lens and all other lenses are wrong. Mm -hmm. Which is where I think that we get into when discussing history. It's like you have one group that's saying it is the lens of like the forefathers, white male landowners. And anyone else who like had a different perspective, you're wrong and you're not patriotic and you're disrespectful. No, that just kind of was the way that it was. I think Marin's summation of that was absolutely on point. Um, Black history is American history. Um, and I think I think a good approach would be to teach history from an aspect of this is where we are now. And yes, we have this. And like you said, yes, there are historically Black colleges and universities. And yes, there are historical Black Greek letter organizations. And yes, there's a Black national anthem. But had it not been for, then these things wouldn't exist. And so you can encompass that all into American history and just give a timeline and lay it all out. I think that would be great. To understand the roots of it so that there's an understanding of why there might be this need or or why why these would have developed not meaning to be exclu- ex- exclusionary or you know to separate themselves from America, but but they were separated. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah. in the context of historically black colleges, well, black people couldn't go to predominantly white institutions. So in this year, this historical black college was founded. And then you had all these other colleges that subsequently followed. Well, in this year, blacks were allowed to attend these universities. And this year, the historically black colleges opened to white people mm-hmm. or the black national anthem. This was a poem that was written. It was arranged into a song. And had it not been for this, then there would be no anthem. It's it's really not per se an anthem. It's more so a rallying cry, if you really pay attention to the words, to be included. It's a cry for help, really, looking at the past and what hope and faith has taught us. Um, so just looking at why these things exist, and this is where we are now. I think that would be a good starting point. So. A good framework by which to apply his a learning to history. Instead of like most things, we take a headline and we run with it, but we never really look at the meat of the situation or, or the text. You'll look at the headline of a book and you'll automatically assume, eh, it's good, it's bad, but you never even read the content of it. So. <laughs> right. I mean, I can say, I mean, again, obviously would not defend slavery for a whole slew of reasons, but having read again, you know, the history of what was happening before and during the civil war from the lenses of various groups, especially socioeconomically, like I would finish some books and be like, wow, like poor white men got screwed. <laughs> like, like, you know, down the, and again, it's just a like a completely different lens where it's like, okay, now I understand why they had some of the attitudes or took some of the actions that they did. And it, you know, it allows for seeing that humanity in everyone. Again, we are all very, very flawed. But you know, again, there's more than one story to be told. Yeah, so, I, really, I just ahead, think it's please. the um, it's how you frame it. It's like this is added to, you know, it's it's not one overshadowing the others. It's not good or bad. Um, you know, it's uh, I think that it's just about the narrative is people interpret. Um, if you have Black history, um, it may overshadow our history, and it will sully our history, and therefore we are, you know, we feel immediately defensive about it, right? Um, it, it doesn't have, you, you represent, what you said represents a better way, right? Um, but how do you make that, it's just very tiny distinction and we're talking about the same kind of material either way but it's how it's interpreted on the on the part of the person who's receiving it right it can be it breed immediate resentment and defensiveness or it can be like oh yeah um uh, it can be inclusive and you know it, it seems like a small distinction um for the same history it's just how you present it and look at it right I think it's more so, too, about just an acknowledgement of what was. Um, I know Andre brought up the 4th of July earlier. And so do do you and Susan even know what Juneteenth is? 
Yeah. I do it's, because it's yeah. um, you know, it's on the national stage now, right? So yeah. yeah. Only only in the last like two years or so did I know what that was. To watch the rest of that episode, go ahead and click the video below me. To see a different compelling healing race episode, you can click the video below me. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.